there was some speculation by some of the the people uh, behind Evasion that it would. I think Planet Bean was actually the one who speculated that six point one point three would break Evasion. We shall see. I'm sure we'll hear from them uh, in the next few hours or so. Yeah. So obviously, don't you know? Don't update yet if you're especially if you're running an a5 device anything newer than the iphone 4 or if you care about jailbreaking yeah. don't update yeah. if you don't i mean knock Man, yourself up yeah feel free <laughs> feel free to go ahead and do that but yeah i yeah. haven't updated because the actual code for it it's not like red snow where you can go and kind of you know go back and use an older version it, this explicitly checks that you're using you know the latest version um, so there's no way to use evasion with new firmware basically so yeah that's some big news but um just stay tuned you should you should hear more as far as what to do with that so let's start with um of course i'm uh, jeff benjamin we have sebastian page we are your host for let's talk jailbreak this is episode number two and we got we have some very interesting topics to talk about today sebastian had quite a few um well about three different things he wanted to specifically touch on. Uh, the first one was, why do you jailbreak? And I thought that was an interesting question. Uh, never really, no one's asked me why I jailbreak. They just automatically assume that I just, I don't know. I've, I've never had that question posted really? before. No. That's interesting. I get asked all the time. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually. My neighbor asks me every other week. He's like, so why do you jailbreak? Should I jailbreak? And um, the answer I give is a cookie cutter answer. Usually I jailbreak because I want to have access to third party applications that might not be available in the app store, um, such as mods and tweaks and um, UI enhancements. So that's basically what I tell him, you know, and usually I go on showing up, showing off a couple of jailbreak tweaks. Um, and um, I make sure to tell him that uh, it might not be for him. You know, I'm like, you know, jailbreaking is awesome to me, but I don't think it would do it for you. Um, you're, you know, he's obviously satisfied with the settings of his iPhone and stuff, so there's no reason to do it. Right. But, but, but to go back on topic, like, why, why do you jailbreak, Jeff? What is your, what are your reasons, or what is the reason why you jailbreak your iPhone and iPad? Um. My reason for jailbreaking the iPhone is just having the freedom to do what I want to do with my device. Um, iFile is a huge one. Um, and things like OXO, um, jailbreak tweaks like that, just improve the experience, in my opinion. I mean, there's so much that Apple hasn't touched on or so many opportunities that they haven't taken advantage of that jailbreakers do. And we saw that with iOS 5 when, you know, that, that big update they implemented all these various tweaks mm -hmm. uh, that jailbreakers had been doing for some time. They finally, you know, for instance, Wi-Fi sync. That was a jailbreak only uh, tool at one point in time. But now that's just, that just comes with the, you know, the stock iPhone. Um, so there's lots of different, I mean, just the freedom of being able to do what I want to do with my device is reason enough alone for me. Yeah, I hear you. It's, it's pretty much the same same to me. First, I I just like to do it because, um, because it's something that's not it's not illegal, but it's not mainstream. It's kind of underground, and I just like this idea that I'm doing something to my phone that ninety percent of other iPhone owners don't do or are aren't even aware of. Right. And this to me uh, just makes it worth it just in itself. Um, but of course, it's not just the one reason why I do it. I do it just like you because I want to have access to all these tweaks, uh, like byte SMS and NC settings and all that stuff. Because it it makes the iPhone or iOS, for that matter, better. You know, that's really the main reason why I jailbreak to make my phone better and uh, more efficient, be more efficient with my phone. Right, and I think if there's one tweak that that you know, I absolutely miss when I cannot jailbreak. It would be like NC settings, just something that simple where you could just quickly toggle off Bluetooth or uh, change the brightness. In my opinion, I think the worst thing about the iPhone is the fact that it doesn't have a quick way to change the brightness. Like that is, if there's one feature that Apple needs to, to implement with their new version of iOS. It's the an ability to change the brightness setting on the iPhone quickly. You can do it on the iPad. You can't do it on the iPhone. Yeah, you'd think, I mean, it, it's simple enough. 
it's simple enough. It's something that everybody would benefit from. You'd think they would have implemented this by now, but obviously they haven't. Uh, but who knows? Maybe that's something we're going to see in iOS 7 sometimes in June or whenever they unveil it. Right, yeah. So You know, like an another reason why, why people jailbreak as well is um, theming. Uh, you know, so in installing Winterboard and making your iPhone, iPhone look different from um, other phones out there. Um, is that something that you do, Jeff? You know, at one point in time, I was pretty into themes. I think, like, I don't think you guys really were digging themes much. Um, no. I know I, you were into Dreamboard for a while. You ha We had all this section on IDB about Dreamboard themes. Yeah, yeah. And it was interesting because, like, it sort of, like, goes back to what you were saying about it just being different. Like, no one uh -huh. else is doing, like, just showing my Android friends, like, me running something that looks like Android on the iPhone. It's kind of shocking mm -hmm. to them. It was, it, I just did it for more so the shock factor, I guess. But then there's yeah. themes like Icon, which tons of people, I'd say... All, of all the themes that we see, 50% of them are icon or more. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree with that? I mean, lately? Yeah, 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 I do. Mm -hmm. I do. It's a, it's such a gorgeous theme, theme too. Yeah. Um, but I like, I like theming not because I want my phone really to be different from other phones. I think the main reason why I apply themes to my iPhone sometimes is because I'm kind of bored <laughs> with uh, the iOS UI. And I think the... The BlackBerry CEO yesterday or a couple of days ago came out saying the the UI of the iPhone is boring of iOS is boring, and he's completely right. He's in no position of talking, of course, but he's completely right about it. And uh, you know, theming is something that can change this, like spice it up a little bit. You know, you can't completely change the UI, um, but it's something that yeah spices it up a little bit and changes it up and uh, makes it a little less boring on a day-to-day -day usage. Right, and I think. You know, theming is more of a, like, a, I don't want to, like, say that only young people do theming, but I'd say generally, if you're going to survey folks, it's usually, like, young yeah. kids that are into themes. Yeah, like, I the think older right. I get, I, I could care, I couldn't, you know, I just don't care as much about theming. It's getting older. Yeah. It's like, all right, I'll, I'll just use the stock iPhone. It's fine with me. But if I was like 14, 15, I'd be, I could totally see myself being crazy about having all the custom themes. I don't know. Maybe Apple yeah, no, will implement I, I think you're right. We see this sometimes in the comments on IDB about themes or on Twitter. I, I see this. Um, I can tell uh, usually they're kids and asking about themes and stuff. So usually it's like more of a younger crowd. Right. Um, but uh, hey, I'm 32. I'm still theming my iPhone just a little bit, just a little bit. I have high icon, icon, and uh, I do a couple. You're using uh, icon on the lock screen. Yeah, really? Uh, I do. I I do. I you know it's a love hate. Not love hate. It's an on and off relationship. I would I would say. <laughs> I love that. I love it. You know, there's no hate about icon. It's just a gorgeous theme. But every once in a while, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna turn it off. However, what I do is I keep the um, the wallpapers that come with uh, icon. I've been using this actually since last year when we went to uh, when I went to Jailbreak Con. I was talking with uh, Shurnix, the guy, the, the designer behind icon, and he was showing me his phone. I'm like, oh my god, this this wallpaper is gorgeous. Yeah. And I, I don't think it was available yet at the time. And he sent it to me, and I was showing it off to everybody, and everybody was like, where did you get this beautiful wallpaper? And I was like, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy is ridiculous. I mean, he is one of the best graphic designers I've seen. Yeah, it is great. He's got such a good eye and understanding of uh, design in general yeah he's a good he's a good dude for yeah. sure yeah all right so moving on a little bit let's talk about something i hate to talk about really and, uh, <laughs> and that's battery life uh jailbreaking and battery life i cannot stand when people ask me i don't know why but i just hate it when people ask me how does such and such tweak affect their battery life what i think in, i know why you you don't like it because you're probably like shaking your head thinking if you have a poor battery life, it's your own fault. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, yeah, because I, I never have battery life issues. 
I, I don't either, personally. Yeah. I and mean, every once in a while, you know, I'm going to have to reboot my iPhone because I think the battery life is not as good as it used to be, like, the, the previous day or something. But um, <clears throat> I never... I don't remember last time I had an issue. Actually, I do remember last time I had an issue with my ba battery life. It was with my iPhone 4, and what I had done, I had jailbroken the iPhone, uh, bring back all the backups from prior to the jailbreak, and of course, like the battery, battery would go like crazy. You know, in a, not even a day, the battery would be just drained. And um, the easy fix, I restored my iPhone. Set it up as new, jailbro jailbroke it, and done. And that's it. Right. Yeah, I just, I'd say there's so many comments about battery life with, with every jailbreak tweak that I review. Mm -hmm. How does it affect battery life? Well, I don't really get into battery life too much. Even if I wasn't jailbroken, I just don't care because I'm always near a source of power. I guess I'm just not out. I guess I'm just antisocial. I don't do much. Always, I'm a homebody. But whenever I'm out, I always have a charger or something near me. I just my car charger, or I have my um, little, you know, the little booster pack that you can plug into your iPhone that can give me battery life. But overall, I just don't have any problems with it. It's just never an issue, even when Joe Broken and running twenty, thirty tweaks. I don't. Know. Yeah. So, so if you had an advice. To give to someone that complains about battery life, what would that be? Don't run like a tweak that has a constantly running, you know, animated wallpaper or screensaver or, I mean, just use common sense when you're installing tweaks. Generally, the, the stuff that I'm reviewing, you can tell if it's going to impact your battery life. Mm -hmm. Like if mm -hmm. it, there's a theme or a, a tweak that has animated wallpaper that runs constantly, like looping over and over. I mean, it goes without saying that that's going to impact your battery life somewhat. But a tweak such as, I don't know, um, I'm trying to think of something, uh, type status or some little itty bitty tweak generally isn't going to affect affect your battery life. Yes, yeah, so something I uh, something I see quite often on Twitter too is, hey, I just installed X Y Z tweak, whatever. Battery life is crap since I installed the tweak. What should I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me uh, let me figure this out for you. I'll come back to you tomorrow. Let me think about it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well, so it's, it's, to answer my, you know, this question, just in case you were wondering what you should do, if that happens to you, maybe you can delete or uninstall the tweak you just installed and figured out what's killing your battery life. That's as simple as this. Yeah. And um, another thing I used to like to do is, and it's not totally recommended, but use like SP settings and disable mobile substrate add-ons. That way you don't mm -hmm. have to uninstall it. You can just disable that tweak at the time. And yeah, and you can see kind of if it makes a difference. Yeah. yeah. But That's keep a keep a charger with you. you know, stay near those outlets. They 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 help. Yeah. Right. See, I, I don't even I don't even walk around with a charger. I just. Uh, I just charge my phone if I know I'm going to be out for the evening. Like if we're going to go out to a party or have dinner, or whatever. I um, I just make sure I charge my iPhone before leaving, and I know no matter what, it's going to go for the night. You know. Right, and it's not like it takes. It's not like it's an iPad where it takes you know two or three hours to charge. Generally, right. it charges fully in less than an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. You guys, let us know what you think about battery life. If you have any solutions or what you do to handle that. Let's move on to some, uh, talk about some more tweaks. This week's tweaks. So what, what tweaks have you seen this week, Sebastian, that, or just, it could just be one tweak in particular that you really like or you don't like? or uh, One tweak I really like, uh, even though I haven't had time to really play around with it, uh, is Tap to Widgets. I know you posted about this last night. Uh, great tweak. You know, how many times I've said to myself, I wish I could just create a calendar event without opening the calendar or without using Siri and stuff. And this tweak is just perfect for that. Um, so for those of you who don't know what tab to widget does, it um, adds shortcuts for notes, reminders, 
and calendar to notifi notification center. So just like NC setting, basically, it adds one more row of icons to a notification center, and you can just tap on the add a note icon and you can just create a note from there, or you can create a new calendar event or a new reminder. Uh, you can send a Facebook or Twitter update also from there. Um, I mean, it's just very simple. It's very clean. It works great. It makes my life easier. And um, I really, really like it so far. Yeah, I think it's a great tweak. It, not only that, but it's just beautiful. And it's designed, it mir mirrors the design that Apple already created with their share widgets. You know, yep. the little Twitter and Facebook share icons and notification center. It basically adds on to that. Um, so it just, it really looks good. The settings look good. It's just a, a well-designed tweak. Um, and it makes, like I said, uh, our lives a lot easier. Just to quickly yeah. add a note or a reminder right from Notification Center. I, I, I left a comment on your post yesterday saying, not a feature request, but like a little uh, something I'd like to see in this tweak. I'd like it to be integrated with NC settings so that I could just flick, you know, like flick through the NC settings and have my Twitter icon, my add note, add calendar event, add reminder event icon. So it's just on, all on one line, on one row, instead of having my NC settings and then my uh, tap to widgets under it. Yeah, Does I that don't, make any sense? Yeah, that makes total sense because that's one reason, if there's one knock, and it's not a knock against the tweak, but the fact that I use both NC settings NC settings isn't going anywhere. That's no. that's like a staple. So yeah. the fact that I use NC settings and then tap to widgets comes, it just looks a little weird to you know one on top of the other. It doesn't. That it's not doesn't give you the cohesive feel. Exactly. Exactly. So who knows? Maybe at some point uh, we'll see these two tweaks merge into one. Hopefully, I don't know if it's going to happen, but yeah, one can not. hope. Probably, Probably not, not. <laughs> but one can hope. <laughs> Speaking of uh, NC settings, just to, I don't want to go too far off base, but what what toggles do you use? Like, what are uh, your go-to toggles? Yeah, I, I'm, you're going to be like, oh, I can't believe you don't have this. But yeah, I'm, I'm a minimalist once again about NC settings. What I have is, I have, so when I put it down, what I see is Bluetooth, airplane mode, do not disturb and flashlight. And then if I flick to the left, I have vibrate on, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi, and that's it. Hmm. So what I use the most is, um, uh, I think I, I, I was wrong about the first one. The first one is uh, tethering. Okay, um, I was going to ask yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's t tethering. The first one is tethering. Yeah, I said. I think I said Bluetooth. No, the first one is tethering, uh, so I don't have to go to my, you know, in the settings and stuff because I use this pretty much every day. I go to Starbucks, um, I bring my iPad Mini, and I turn tethering on, and uh, I just, uh, you know, get internet from my phone on my iPad. So this is the first one. I use it pretty much every single day. And then the other ones I use rarely. Um, and like uh, airplane mode, you know, obviously I do use this when I take the plane, but that's about it. And do not disturb every once in a while, but all my do not disturbs are already um, set to, to automatically show up at a certain time every day. Right. Um, and uh, flashlight because I use it a lot to find my daughter's, uh, my daughter's stuff that are like teddy bears and stuff lost under the bed or something, <laughs> or the pacifiers. The pacifiers are evil, man. They just hide <laughs> in those places you would never think about. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe I'll figure that out one day. I don't know. I hope you do. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I have on my NC settings is um, the first thing is the power options. And that includes like things like respring, rebo reboot, and power off. And obviously, I'm going to use that because I'm always mm -hmm. installing or uninstalling tweaks and things like that, troubleshooting, stuff like that. Next is Wi-Fi, um, then the flashlight, and then the brightness slider. So did you, did you name brightness in yours? No, I do not use brightness at all. Really? Yep. Yeah, I know it's a shocker, right? So... Do you just go to settings and I never tweak my brightness. I never have to for some reason. So you use the automatic. Yeah. And it's working just fine for me. 
do you read your do you use your iPhone when you're asleep like in the dark? Uh, rarely, you know, like okay. off topic, but my wife and I have a new rule. We used to have a rule, well, we had a rule before that said no iPad in the bedroom. Right. So, you know, like never an iPad in the bedroom. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a TV either in the bedroom. We just have one TV in the house and it's Same downstairs. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So we had this rule, no iPad in the bedroom. And uh, like recently, I just found out, I mean, I just found out, I figured out that we were spending a lot of time on our iPhones in bed. I'm like, this is not this is not what a bed is for, you know. So we made a new rule. I made up the new rule, and she agreed to it, saying, no more iPhone in the bedroom uh, when we're both in the bedroom. Right. You know, if you're by yourself in the bedroom, yeah, do whatever you want. As soon as I walk in the bedroom, if she's like learning French on uh, Duolingo or something, right, um, she has to turn it off or put it down anyway, you know. Yeah, we have similar thing. Um, no, I don't always abide by it, but generally, um, no, you know, MacBook, obviously, or, yeah. or we're, we're trying to work on the iPhone thing too, but I'm usually the one that's bad about that because I'm always trying to keep up to date with tweaks and things like that. But that's a good rule. I like that. Yeah. Rule. Yeah. I think, uh, our life gets slightly better. Yeah. I mean, it's since, just, uh, since, we, since doing this, I mean, yeah. It, it, it got to be like terrible like we would just be in bed and she would be like on her iphone i would be on my iphone and not like, talking to each other <laughs> yeah i'm like this is terrible you know that's, that's basically the only time we have right uh, with my wife because she comes back from work we take care of the baby we bath we fe feed then we have dinner and then it's time to go to bed basically right yeah. and uh we don't have much time on our own so i don't want to spend this time on my iphone really yeah yeah i can definitely appreciate that for sure um so you wouldn't need brightness settings then? And no, I don't. I mean, even before we set this rule, I uh, I didn't really need it. You know, I mean, the the brightness would adjust fine, uh, depending on darkness or the light in the room. I it never occurred to me that I had to tweak it. Okay, cool. Well, um, I also like, like you said, the uh, the tethering. I think that's a great. Oh it's yeah, just a great feature. Do you pay for tethering, right? Like, is that, uh, is that an well, extra? feature that you have to pay I'm on, for i'm on at&t so we have a uh, family plan i believe and uh i believe it's free you know like we have a shared data plan basically i had to give up my unlimited data plan which is fine because i never really used it, m much of it right and uh so now we have tethering for free right yeah same here i, so I think on verizon you have to pay for tethering don't you no i have the um i think it's called share everything and yeah it comes with it Okay. Comes by. Yeah, it's great, man. And you know, like there is obviously some jailbreak options for tethering, but um, I was like, I don't know if I want to go for the jailbreak way if I can do it like the legit way, right. not yeah. about AT and T sending me text messages and threats. We're gonna come and send the squad team to your house and yeah. steal your iPhone from you so you can't tether. Yeah, yeah so, it just gives you a peace of mind. I'd rather yeah. just do things the legit way. One thing I do wish, and I think one of those tethering apps does have the option is to what was i saying it was on twitter a few days ago to automatically um like make it so you don't have to enable tethering does that make sense no like like it's always running oh i don't know what i was trying well, to go well, for. well you you could technically have it always running i'm trying to think there was something specific that that I wanted it to do, and I don't think that was necessarily it. Um, you can have it always running if you don't have a device, for example, my iPad Mini, connecting to it or grabbing, you know, like the internet connection from it. Right. Then it's not going to do anything. It's just out there, but it's I don't I don't even think it uses battery life or anything because it's just on but doesn't do anything. I think it was not. I think it was have it always on when a Wi-Fi device is trying to connect to it. Does that make sense? Maybe yeah, it, it makes a little more sense now. Yeah, like my iPad, for instance, like having just. I don't how know. do you how do you tell the tweak that your iPad wants to connect to it, though? Yeah, I don't I don't know what I was thinking. Let's just table that right now. I, I don't know. <laughs> it was something. It was a good idea at the time, and some people gave me some feedback saying, "Hey, this particular job." I think it was tether me. This jailbreak tweak does this. I wish I could find the tweet, but. Um, I think it was Tether Me, which is a jailbreak tweak available 
um, that allows you to do tethering and a couple other cool things. So maybe I'll investigate that and come back next week and talk about yep. it. All right. Hey, would you want to talk about the uh, some of the other tweaks we talked about this week on IDB? Uh, yeah. Um, let me think. I've got I've got a list in front of me actually. I can't prepare, Jeff. Yeah, I can't okay. prepare. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I really like Audio Explorer. I don't yeah, know. Did that, you check that out? I checked your post. Uh, I would have no use for it really. But uh, can you give us like the quick, very quick rundown of very the tweet? Very quick because we're running out of time. But basically, yep. what this does is it allows you to export audio from every app on your device. So any third-party app, any app that you got from the app store, you can find all the audio files associated with that app and save them as ringtones. So if there's a particular sound effect in Angry Birds that you really like, you want them to make that your text messaging notification, you can do that. If there's so you can so basically you can browse the file system of of uh, Angry Birds in this case. Right. But and then, figure out what the sound files are and import right, but the, uh, nice the size thing, of the ringtone. The nice thing about this is that you don't have to browse the file system. All the audio files are automatically linked using, uh, I think what they call those, uh, when you set up an alias. Uh, so it basically uses an alias to link to all the, the sound files in one convenient location. And then you can just, you don't really have to go messing around perusing the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, uh, it just cans all the files and just pulls out the, 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 the sound files for you, right? Right, right. So it's, that's an awesome cool. tweet. What else did you have? I saw you talked about PPSSPP. Is it out? Is it available yet? Is it in a project? What's, what's it's, the status? It's out, but I'm kind of, I don't know in what capacity because it's on some my repo space repo. And mm -hmm. I'm always kind of um, suspicious. Yeah, um, I don't. The developer, I really need to just contact the developer directly. But I have installed it on my iPod Touch. It it does work. I've loaded up one of the um, PSP ROMs, and um, but it did crash like immediately. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's an official build or if it just leaked out and someone decided to put it on a repo or what. That's kind of why I haven't gotten to it yet. But it's very promising. I can tell you that. Yeah, we, we are looking forward to uh, your review and see what's going on with this. Um, another tweak we talked about is Compose, which adds uh, the new, new mail and new message shortcuts to Notification Center. Yeah. So pretty much like Tap to Widget, huh? very similar to Tap to Widget. You add one more line of items to your Notification Center. In this case, it's new email and new message. Um, it seems to me like a great tweak, I mean, simple uh, for what it does. Uh, but it seems that it could be integrated very easily in tap to widgets as well. Right. And the thing about that, um, the way it was at first was pretty, I mean, it worked, but it, one of them took you actually out of notification center and opened up the app directly. So oh, it wasn't we, nearly as well done as, um, yeah, not as integrated. Yeah. yeah. And I think he's I updated see. the tweak to make it a little better, but it's still not pretty like tap to widgets. So, yeah. Yeah. Another tweak we talked about is Instahancer, which uh, has a bunch of new options to Instagram. I think this one is an ordi. You know? this, this tweak has been released in Cilia for, for a while, but we just got to, uh, to check it out and talk about it on IDB. Um, so what does, what does it do, Jeff? It saves images, zoom and stuff? What? Yeah, basically it just adds like basic you know, customization to Instagram, allows you to save images, you can zoom, you can... Uh, do all sorts of little, I mean, it's nothing great, but it allows you for, if you're a heavy Instagram user, then I can see yourself mm -hmm. really liking that, that tweak. Yeah. What about landscape videos, which forces landscape mode when watching videos? Landscape videos is a, uh, I really like it because, you know, when you, whenever you have your uh, phone locked in a portrait mode and you watch a video, it's obviously in portrait mode and yep. it's really small landscape videos forces your phone into landscape mode just for that video even if it's locked in a portrait mode so once you play the video it just pops over landscape mode as soon as you exit the video you're back in portrait mode locked so mm -hmm. i like it i wish someone i think someone uh, left a comment on this post or somewhere else i saw this someone saying i wish someone would make such a tweak for video recording so you force everyone to record <laughs> videos in landscape mode yeah because this like portrait mode is killing me man i can't remember <laughs> how many times i've told my wife put it in landscape no yeah. i mean <laughs> i did a demo for her on the tv i was like look 
this is like how it looks on the TV. Like, what yeah. are you gonna do? Like, turn your head sideways? Just, I mean, it's just not. Yeah, it's yeah. just not Sometimes right. Sometimes I actually catch myself creating portrait videos, and that's just a no-no. So yeah, that would be <laughs> nice of Apple. I think actually the uh, YouTube uploader app. What is that called? Um, what is that app called? Let me find it real quick on my phone. It's YouTube Capture. It's a, a App Store app released by Google yeah. that you can upload videos directly from your phone to YouTube. It that, forces you to record in, in landscape, right? Right, it forces you. So, yeah, I think that would be good if Apple did that. They won't, but uh, or it would be good, nice to have the option to automatically force you, like, in the settings for, you know, photos and video to have the option yeah. to force you in the landscape. We're really running out of time, yeah. but... Um, yeah, let's we, go very quickly about yeah. uh, on the other tweaks we have. We have pod switcher. Um, what do you think? Yeah, may, nay, good, bad? Uh, uh, so, so. So, so. I think I, I looked at your video and I was not super impressed. But, you know, a man's trash is someone else's treasure, right? That's yeah. what you said. It, it's not trash, but it's just something I wouldn't use. It's just too. That's one of the things. If you were to say, okay, this may hurt your battery, then that's something that I think possibly could. Okay. What about Sorik's new tweak? Um, I'm not sure I pronounced it right. Q. Uh, I think probably yeah. not really pronounced Q. Probably it's Q. Q. It's Q. And <laughs> if you, I can't even. Sometimes I create videos where I just I cannot go back and watch them because they're so bad. Like uh -huh. the, the 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 pronunciation of certain things that I say is just so awful. I'm embarrassed to even watch it again. So <laughs> I'll just ban my. I'll never even open it ever again. Uh, but, I think uh, I pronounced the, it the tweak, itself is, the tweak itself is pretty good. If it's the video, awesome if your video is not, the tweak is good. <laughs> <laughs> it's an awesome tweak. It basically allows you to add um, a next, just like the, the iTunes, iTunes 11 allows you to add a next up song. So when you want to play another song, say you're playing a song now and you want to hear this next song after that. Well, instead of having to interrupt your currently playing song, you can just uh, install Q and hit the next button and that'll add it to a playlist uh, a temporary dynamic playlist that will add that next song to the next playing track that was a terrible explanation but no no i yeah. think that was pretty good basically you can uh, select songs to be played next right that's it. <laughs> yeah that was pretty simple and uh, it's two dollars fifty and uh and i think it's a great tweak yeah uh, what else do we have we have a uh, mail and answer pro that's an oldie which has been updated for ios 6. crescent yeah, that, so can you tell us about it? Crescent is a jailbreak tweak that allows you to uh, use Siri to enable or disable do not disturb mode. Really simple tweak created by Joshua <laughs> Tucker, Evan Coleman, great guys. I wish these guys would make a tweak like this that allows me to control my nest with Siri, man. Oh, man, that would be awesome. Control your nest and your Philips Hue, which yeah. I know you probably don't care about, but I like it. Uh, what, do, what else do we have real quick? Default SB page. Uh, which allows you to select the default page on your springboard when you unlock your iPhone. So there seems to be a lot of um, misunderstanding about this tweak. Like people don't seem to really get what it's about. Um, I think it's something mostly for people who are heavy themers. You know, if you have a theme and the home page is like this beautiful, I don't know, video of the Joker trying to kill Batman or something. I don't know. You might want to skip and go directly to your apps. I don't, I'm not sure. What I think it's, it. I mean. I, Mostly for Dreamboard. That's what the first yeah. thing that came to my mind is this is a perfect jailbreak tweak for Dreamboard uh, because it allows you some Dreamboard themes have different, completely different looks on each page. Mm -hmm. um, and this I could see being a, a good compliment for that. Okay. Finally, we have Thumbs Up, uh, which adds lock screen controls to uh, Pandora. So Instead of opening the app Pandora to give a thumbs up or a thumb down to a song, you can do this directly from the lock screen. Yeah. Um, I think it's a great tweak. I think it's a great idea. Very simple, once again. Uh, very straightforward. Um, the only problem I is I don't use Pandora. So. Yeah, well, I, I, I think I wrote a comment saying I wish this would work with Spotify, which is what I use most. Right. Um, you use the, uh, use the music or the radio in Spotify a lot? Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty, yeah. Not a lot, but uh, on a regular basis, I would say. Yeah, I just uh, do this and beam it to my uh, to my home stereo and just let it play in the house all day. Right. Yeah, when I think about turning on the music, man, I don't even think about it sometimes. Yeah. 
Um, I think that wraps it up for all the tweaks we talked about this week. I think it wraps it up for the podcast recording itself. Right. Um, so have we heard anything about 6.1.3? Does that actually, I'm seeing on Twitter, some people are saying it does um, break evasion. Like, But I'm trying to confirm that. Okay, I see something from Muscle Nerd saying iOS 6.1.3 is out, jailbreaker, stay away. There's yeah. no coming back to 6.1.2, even if you save blobs. So, except for iPhone 4, of course, and iPod Touch 4G. Um, yeah, so. That doesn't confirm. Or that doesn't confirm it. anything. Or, so, we'll have to wait and see. Probably by the time this podcast is published and available on iTunes and everything, we'll have an answer. Right. Um, so make sure to check back on IDB for that. For sure. um, just really quick, I wanted to address a couple um, stuff we got in feedback last week from the first episode. First, I want to thank everyone for uh, the awesome feedback, um, mostly positive. Um, of course, there were a couple of people who said Jeff sounded better than me, but what else is new? Um, I did my best to improve the sound this week. Um, we're going to find out very quickly if it was better or not. But uh, if it's not, we're going to have a couple more tricks up our sleeves that we might have to um, use to increase, improve the my sound, sound of my end. Um, a few people asked if we could make the podcast available on Stitcher. Um, I got in touch with the people, submitted an application to put IDB on Stitcher. Um, I haven't heard back from him it's since. There. It's there. It's there? Yeah, I checked last night. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I submitted the application. It said we'll be back, you know, be in touch with you to let you know, and I haven't heard back from him. So, but yeah, if you say it's night. there, yeah. it's there. Perfect. Well, that's great. Um, yeah, for listeners, if you have more feedback, please, please, please send us feedback because it helps us make a better podcast, really. Um, Make sure to leave a comment on the blog post or make sure to rate the the podcast on iTunes. It, it really helps us as well. And you can always get in touch with Jeff, me, or the IDB account on Twitter, Facebook, pretty much everywhere we're there. Um, so that's about it for me. All right. Talk to you guys later. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. See ya.